Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Um, in today's video, I want to tell about my relationship with uh, Jairene and how I found out that she was adopted from a Filipino family. So in the beginning, when I met her, she introduced me to her parents. Her father is a Filipino, 100%. Her, mo her mother also Filipino, 100%. Um, but then I realized, or I realized um, how difficult her life was in this family. That she was always the bad child in the eyes of the parents. Always she was used. Um, like a housemaid, um, she had to do all the work at home while the other sister, just two years older, she was treated very well. And then also she always told me uh, stories that when she went to school, every day her classmates would talk to her in Japanese language like they know a few words uh, of Japanese they would say arigato well, they would always give her a feeling that she is a Japanese person then um, she never understood why they do this and she thought maybe it's just accidentally that she looks maybe a little bit Japanese and then I also noticed uh, some physical um, differences that when I look at her and her siblings and mother, father, I did not see any similarity that she could be related to them. And then also we had a lot of problems with her parents. Um, yeah, we have been um, fighting against her parents. We went to the police to, um, yeah, to fight or get support from the police against her parents. <laughs> so that's not normal for a Filipina to go to the police to ask for help because the parents uh, treat her bad. So she decided uh, to be with me instead with the parents. And then she told me that the grandma told her a story that she was found in the forest. And that someone has left her in the forest and uh, now the mother or father has found her and adopted her and she always thought that would not be real that they just say that for for fun or to make her angry uh, but actually that at the end it came out that that was probably true um, she had a good relationship with the grandma and that's why the grandma I think told her the true story and she also um, also the siblings if if they have a problem in fighting then uh, they would also say yeah, you are just uh, you're not our child or whatever you're not part of our family and then and then I was the one who put all those information together and realized that it cannot be possible that they are her real parents and then also the grandma also um, yeah, 
I, I said to her she should um, talk more with her grandma. The grandma was living on another island, but she went to the other island to visit her grandma and talk to her more about her past, what she knows. And the other island is where she grew up. And there, and the grandma told her the story that um, she knows her real father. I think yeah, she was working for the real father, like assistant or something, and the real father was a Japanese man. Um, and the real mother, um, I don't know much about the real mother, but uh, she said that um, the Japanese man was in the military and he, I think he died or he left and did not say anything. And the, the mother was alone with Jarin. And uh, what the grandma said is that she probably uh, made suicide. And then before she uh, killed herself, she put the baby in the forest. And that's how she was found in the forest. That's what the grandma told us, or told her. And yeah, I was the one who um, motivated her to find out more about it, because I had this feeling that this could not be possible. And then the parents um, found out that I was telling her that they are not her real parents. So the parents got very angry at me. <laughs> because I was the one to uh, discover this big secret. She was already 19 at the time or 18. So all her life she lived with uh, this fake information about her family. Yeah, so the parents got very angry at me. The father, he, one day he came into my room, um, uninvited, the door was open. I was in my bed playing with my phone. Uh, Jarin was working in the bake shop. And then he was in my room and then he was punching with his uh, hand on my table. Uh, with full power, so I was very scared. And luckily, he did not bring any knife or something like this. But then, the landlady uh, who gave me the room for rent, she had a husband, and the husband uh, immediately came in the room and uh, forced him to go out. They had a physical argument. <laughs> so, the husband from the landlady with the stepfather of my girlfriend. Uh, I was very lucky that this man, uh, the Filipino man, came to help me. And then a few minutes later, Jarin came from the bake shop to my room and asked if I'm okay, because some people have told her that the father will come to me and uh, do something bad to me. <laughs> so that was a scary moment. Um, yeah, I should have not stayed in the same village so long, but because the rent was very cheap and she had to work near our place where we lived, that's why I decided to stay there longer. But we had so many problems with her parents and the police that uh, it would have been better to move far away to another island. So, yeah, in the end, I think I could uh, convince her really that those are not her real parents and she believed it because of the grandma also, she confirmed it. 
and then all those puzzles, all her life, all the situation that she experienced, how bad she was treated compared to the other sister who is the real sister from the mother, a uh, real daughter from the mother. Uh, yeah, then she realized everything makes sense. And yeah, that's how I discovered that she was adopted. So that's one part. There's still a lot more of this story, but um, that's enough for today. Uh, leave a comment down below if you have experienced something like this before. I think that's very seldom and very hard to find a relationship like this. Okay, see you in the next video. Bye.